Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Two Feet Social Club. Um, another testing um, with a great, great winemaker. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, 55 Degrees, a great storage, one storage facility here uh, in St. Helena. Um, and uh, tonight uh, uh, with me, um, I have my good friend and great, great winemaker, Mark Herold from uh, Mark Herold Wine. Uh, wines. You like that? I like it a lot. Just like, uh, how long did it take you to uh, pick up the name? Uh, which one, Harold? Oh, Mark Harold Wines for your company. <laughs> uh, the, that, I bet you that was pretty quick. It took me just <laughs> a second. See, is that, yeah? So you decided that you to know, go it's, like... It's, it's awkward because, you know, uh, when I started Maris, um, I thought about using the name Harold, but you always hate your name when... When you see it, yeah, and so I rejected it. So you happen to, you know, you learn to like it, your name, to like your name. Well, it was the only alternative after Maris. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it it doesn't look bad, I think. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So um, tell us a little bit about you, and uh, I know you are uh, born and raised in Panama, right? And born in in um, in Southern California. Ah, born in Southern um, California. Yes, but raised in Panama. Okay. So my mom is Panamanian. Okay. And uh, and uh, so your parents divorced or? Yes. Okay. And you follow your mom? And I followed my dad to okay. the United States. Okay. And uh, so I actually I came here to to learn and um, write English better. Okay. Because I went uh, to Spanish speaking schools yeah. in Panama. Yeah. But so uh, the, uh, when the, when the divorce happened. Uh, you um, you went with your mom to Panama? No, no, no. Uh, my mom and my dad were in Panama. Oh, ah, okay, I got you. Okay, I got we you. We were raised in Panama. Okay, all, all right, all I got five you. of us. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm the five. middle. I'm the middle child. No oh, shit. Yes. So like um, brothers, sisters? Uh, two. Uh, um, I'm. Uh, there are two, two, two boys and three girls. So yeah, I'm the middle one. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So all right. So you came up to Panama and then uh, you decided to go. Um, uh, um, studies and things because you end up like to do a PhD yes. and uh, and uh, and eventually that uh, PhD led you into the wine or the wine love led you into the PhD what what, no, what the, came first the PhD was in fish actually I I wanted to pursue a PhD in uh, fish uh, aquaculture okay uh, and my PhD was uh, in uh, fish nutrition and oddly enough um, 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 it's strange uh, that I pursued a degree in fish nutrition, but um, my my interests were always in science and yeah. wanting to figure out science. And um, I had a passion for wine ever since I started graduate school, ever since I was yeah. a young kid. Sure. And I started collecting wines in graduate school. Oh, is that right? Oh, Chateauneuf du Pape. Uh, so you're making money? How do you collect wine? I, I mean, I, like, I, you know. I, 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 well, back then, Chateau <laughs> du Pape was cheap. <laughs> well, that's true. Okay, I, I should have let you go, you know. Yeah, like, cut you on the, on, the, on the first board. Oh, they were delicious, but yeah, yeah they're all drunk now. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were delicious. Uh, now, how old were you then? Um, I was in my 30s, 20s, okay. 30s. Okay. Took eight years to get my PhD. And then from that, as soon as you got your PhD, you went to work for Phelps. Yes. And how you found this job? Well, I applied along with a bunch of um, enologists that yeah. um, have masters in um, fermentation science and um, at Davis, yeah. and I applied and I, I got a position at Phelps. They they liked my resume, they liked my my fresh approach. They wanted somebody that had a different approach, and yeah. I I became the research enologist at Phelps. Yeah, and I started experiments at Phelps, experiments in everything you can imagine. Stirring, batonnage, yeah. and white wines, frequency, malolactic fermentation, no malolactic fermentation, yeast, uh, different yeast strains. So you had your, your own little laboratory, and uh, and uh, it was uh, it was amazing. That was my school. Yeah, yeah. just felt was my school. And you and you stayed there for how long? Uh, six vintages. Six years. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Um, I was working back at Indulu, and I remember being invited by you, and we were like, you know, maybe. Uh, 18 people or maybe 20 people and uh, did a, a, a comparative testing and uh, and uh, that kind of thing and uh, um, and we were supposed to bring a bottle of wine and I remember like bring a bottle of wine from a good friend of mine 
I'm not going to mention the name, and, uh, and you fucking drilled me that day. I mean, like, uh, you know, you were like, you know, and you were sitting on the other side of the table like the, 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 the master of ceremony. <laughs> and, and you were like, you know, what is it? You know, and, uh, and, uh, and there's like, you know, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, 97 Point Parker, hello. I'm a very curious person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I am. Yeah. Well, so, so, and then, so, ninety-seven. You know, um, then six years and in, into in that, um, and then you left and decided you own uh, um, uh, with your ex uh, yes. girlfriend. I started uh, Joseph Mary, Phelps in ninety-six. Yeah. Um, and while I was at Joseph Phelps, yeah. I started a company called Maris. Yeah. In my garage yeah. in nineteen ninety-eight. I it remember a, that. It was no. the first vintage. Yeah. So that was released in two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that was a great success. I mean, what you guys, I mean, they really put your name really on the, on the, on the, on the map. I mean, that's, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially like selling with a vintage, like 1998 vintage, which was a very challenging vintage. And, uh, and, uh, and that year, the, those wines were like a lean and mean and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a very bold like, so to speak, in, in many ways, especially for California. And, uh, and Mark, I remember Mark coming up for uh, a, a, uh, a, Coming up at uh, uh, um, the premier Napa Valley, he had this little bottle in his pocket and and and, and trying those wines, you know. And uh, I remember that. And, uh, <laughs> and this thing, and this thing was just humongous. I mean, like, what the fuck? I mean, this is like you know that was incredible. But you know, the really the, the 98 vintage put you on the map, you know. And I remember that the the, the French Andre picked your wine, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, on the list, and uh, that was definitely one of the big big 98 uh, uh, wines. And uh, so this thing, like, really, you know, uh, sets you up in a way that uh, uh, you be, you were going to be a force to be recognized. Because then, 99, 2000, and they really, uh, uh, then Parker started to, like, you know, uh, you know, find you and uh, and uh, and the great ratings and things like that. And then, and until 2007, what was the last vintage of Maris? It was uh, 2000. The first, the last vintage I made was 2007. 2007 I, I didn't yeah. put it in the bottle. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because uh, 2007 was actually the last vintage that was out, that was also made in the in in, in the garage. Yeah. Um, so I, I need to backtrack a little bit. Um, uh, the city of, of Napa only allows um, eight barrels um, legally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a garage. Yeah. Um, and that was our limit. And by the end of 2006, 2000. That was 200. Uh, um, I had 100 barrels in my garage. <laughs> and I remember one day, um, m my my front door was cracked up, and I was afraid that a burglar had entered. So we called the police, and, and the police went through the entire house, uh, and they actually went to the backyard, yeah. into the garage with 100 barrels of wine. Yeah. I thought I was going to get busted, yeah. and they said nothing. Yeah. It was incredible. So... Uh, uh, there was a neighbor that didn't like us making wine. We made too much noise because 97, uh, 2007 was such a compressed year. Yeah. We were crushing until 2 in the morning in our backyard. Yeah, well. We made a lot of noise. That was the last year. I know. I think you did it the, the hard way. I mean, really. Um, the first year, I had no forklift. I was the forklift. Yeah. I yeah. was pitchfork into the Man. December. That, that's what, that, I, I'm sure it, that, that is creating some incredible memories. Yeah, you know, to uh, to uh, to uh, to do something like that. I mean, especially the the you know where you are now. So let's uh, let's move on and uh, and uh, and you know, it's great to know that the, the past, you know, to understand a little bit more what is going on now. Yes. And uh, now we are like a market road. Um, you are Mary's has been sold, uh, and uh, and uh, um, Mary's is gone pretty much. Uh, now this is market road and. Uh, um, with Mark Herold, what is going on? So uh, to start with, uh, um, I don't know if I should bring some questions already here, but you know, what, let's talk about the concept of Mark Herold. How different Mark Herold is from Mary's? Well, um, as we get older, we learn and we want to make things better. And um, I love making Maris. During those years, I learned that um, that wine is about balance, and so 2010 was the very first year that I made um, these wines, and so the things that I actually learned uh, from from 
my stint at Maris was was to actually embrace balance and I could say that these wines are a little bit the same as Maris but uh, different. Um, I think they're balanced, extracted, but not overly extracted. Um, and what I would like everybody after they take a sip is to say this is delicious and they would want more. So let's let's try to uh, so you, you you brought with you like two wines tonight, right? Yes. To, uh, to taste for us, and uh, the first one is the um, Herald. Yeah, I call them uh, see the baby Herald and the the big Herald. Is that right? So we're starting with the baby Herald on the left, and uh, um, the, the brown label. The brown label, and this is 100 percent cab. They're both 100 percent cab. Okay. So the the brown label comes from. Uh, okay. Two, two fruit. Okay. Let's like let's, let's bring a question here because and then we can uh, start to test the wine whether we listen to the question, and then we can. Uh, Hi, Mark. Uh, how you doing? Um, question for you, my friend. I know you're doing your your new project like Mark Rolls wines, and uh, we never get a chance to talk about it. Sorry, like I'm blinking the Napa Valley after all. It's beautiful and sexy. Um, why don't you ask you about your wine? Um, you seem like you have a lot of things going on after Mirrors. And I wanted to know more about your latest Cabernet production, Mark Herald wines. Uh, I get a chance to taste the one that was delicious as always, but I was wondering about uh, where did you find the grapes and uh, what kind of process you do and if you can fill me in a little bit. We'd love to be there with you to drink some wine. I miss you. And I uh, hope to see you soon, my friend. Kisses. I, you so, know, I, I think you might need to help me. Um, I think there was a lot of Benoinese in that. Yeah, Benoinese. So, <laughs> you know, pretty much what he says was about the So, that's, that's, that's the understand. So, um, uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. So, that kind of, uh, you know, come back to the same question we're like trying to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to answer about the vineyards, um, talking about the process. And uh, especially, I, Benoit would love to be filled, you know. He likes to be filled, you know. Uh, uh, he likes to be filled? That's what he said. Filled with what? I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> feel like, you know, answers. I don't know. Give him some answers. <laughs> so, um, uh, so that's a new process, new uh, new vineyards for you? or um, something Actually, like um, some of them are different. Um, some of them are the same. So many of the mayors... Uh, vineyards that I had in the past, um, I still I still have contracts for. Okay. Uh, I lost them for a little bit, but um, I got them back um, slowly. And some of the um, uh, some of the fruit comes from for this brown label, for example, um, Kumsel fruit that um, that I've had since the Maris days, yeah. and also a little bit of Stagecoach. Um, the Stagecoach fruit Jan Krupp has planted. Um, with my specificities, okay. so clone, rootstock, um, spacing, orientation, um, and uh, and these are the grapes that you're finding in this in this bottle. So um, another question, so that that's good, because I have another question for you here coming up, and uh, from uh, another fellow here. Um, this is, can I and, understand this one? Yeah, I do see. Mark Harrell, Christopher Lund, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, you've made some great wines over the years. What makes a great wine, the vineyard or the winemaker? That's a great question. Um, I think the wine, okay, so I think it's uh, threefold. So I think you have a vineyard, um, and I don't think that these are in any priority. You have vineyard, barrels, winemaker. Without those three, you have nothing. That's simple. It's pretty simple. That's so it's like a, that's not like the chicken and the egg who comes first. Well, the actually the egg came first. Well, some people you know may challenge that. I mean, well, I'm not, but you know, some people may challenge that. Well, dinosaurs have been making eggs a lot longer than chickens were around. Yeah, but you know, but you know, maybe they were not like you know, if they were you know, if they were reptile, maybe they were not reptile. I mean, I think I understand what you're saying. But you know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, so you got it, no? So, but you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, a you, you still need to work with 
I think the winner still come first because you still need to work with a pretty decent or yes. very good. The so vineyard, that's so the vineyard, yeah, that's vineyard answer the question paramount. right there. Yeah. Yes. So and then after that, the barrels or the winemaker? Well, of course, the winemaker. If you if you have a great winemaker but you have poor barrels, then what do you have? Well, I mean, you have natural wines. Uh, you don't like that. You don't believe on that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying you don't I'm, believe I'm, on I'm, that. I'm imagining the the lack of nice barrels. So, um, how important the barrels are uh, into your winemaking process? Very. What is you know how much? If if money was an object, if money was an object, you know, and uh, you get like a, a ton of money, where would you put this money? Would it be in the vineyard? Would it be in uh, equipment? In uh, equipment, for instance, equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the crush, uh, crusher and distiller, solder and all mm -hmm. that, or uh, um, barrels, or marketing uh, people. Well, of course, I think the vineyard would come first. You need a, you need, you need a place with with pedigree. With pedigree, but you know, pedigree is not achieved in the, in a, in one year, two years, or ten years. Pedigree is, you know, a vineyard in France has pedigree. Uh, some vineyards in the United States that were planted back in the 1870s, you know, and 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 still producing uh, grapes have pedigrees. Some vineyards in the United States that have been planted in the, in the 50s have pedigrees because that's you know 50 years old or so, 60 years old, whatever it is. But you know, what is pedigree to you? For a vineyard, it's a place where grapes have been known to taste amazing and produce amazing wine. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. Yeah. Yes. But this is back in California. I mean, if you don't if you don't make good wine in California, you should be shot, isn't it? Uh, well, because some, you're in some places you're right. Yeah. Most of the place, at yeah. least decent. I mean the. Yes, most places. I mean, you can go to San Diego, it'd be really hard. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, don't know. I bet you, like, you know, but with a little bit more oak, this is where the winemaker is coming mm -hmm. to, uh, to, uh, to, to, you know, the, the importance of a winemaker. Oh, that's very important as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I don't want to, you know, uh, just, you know, talk um, to me, say something. I mean, like, you what, know. What, what happens in a bottle of wine is an accumulation of decisions. Um, I believe there's uh, tens of thousands of decisions that goes into a bottle of wine. As long as you don't screw them up, then the wine turns out amazing. Yeah. The vineyard is one of those decisions. I agree with that. It's just one. Yeah. So that means that the winemaker is more important. It's or the vineyardist. Or the vineyard, the, 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 the farmer. All of it. It's all an accumulation of, it. of decisions that makes a great wine. What is terroir for you? Uh, site exposure. That's it. Soil, rocks. How about how about the human uh, approach? Is a family? Is a family like? Okay, we talk mostly about terroir in France, you know, Burgundy and Bordeaux, and you know, for one minute. It's do not, you think the family? It's not Britannomyces. No, that's no, I know no, that. But you know, if, if a family stays long enough with this uh, this uh, this uh, this same uh, uh, vineyard, you know, and I'm talking about like for generation, is the family power of the terroir? Because this is as long as they don't mess it up. Sure, but you know, so they don't mess it up. You know, because this is like you know, this is. You know, they don't mess it up because this is like, you know, this is the, uh, it goes from like, you know, generation to new generation to generation. So there, you know, there is like a, uh, people are really, um, how should I should say that, you know, nurturing, you know, this mm -hmm. is the, the one in the bank. This is, this is a lifestyle. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so is, do you believe that, you know, people can be part of the terroir? Interesting. No, I think they, yes, they can be part of terroir by expressing the terroir, but I don't think they can be terroir. Okay. Sure of that. Hmm? You, you sure of that? I mean, I'm saying that you're the clever one. You have a PhD. I, I mean, I, you know. You know, I, I don't think how they can be part of the earth. Well, they but be, because. They can be part of the earth. Because, because, this is, because there is a, 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 a understanding on, the, on how 
the dirt is and uh, how the you know understanding of uh, like you know this plant is not working out and uh, and I'm gonna fix it I'm gonna help it and uh, and uh, but this is something that this understanding is coming after like years and years of uh, of uh, of uh, in generations of uh, of uh, of uh, nurturing the, the same plot the same land the same. But let me ask you: Is it is it is has it been the same generation after generation, or has it changed? The same bit. family, the same thing. This is like you know, you you know, your kid, you know, you go see grandpa and you live at the farm. So you are sleeping in the same bed it's that your so your great great grandfather was sleeping. A little bit different. A little bit different. Ah, maybe, but you understand what I'm saying? Better. This is the poetry of this. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, you like that, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 100% cab, right? Yes. 100% cab. This is the 2010. 2010. So how many cases of uh, of uh, this one you make? Oh, not much. So the brown label, um, we make um, about 200, uh, no, about 300 cases, and um, the white label about 175. Okay. So I know, so meaning that the wallet bar may be a little bit more like well, uh, um, no, this one's good, that one's better. Right? Okay. Yeah. And hundred percent cab? Yes. Both. 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 What's the difference? The, Coming from the, second years? The difference is that they come um, the white label is a uh, selection of vineyard blocks um, and uh, barrels and vineyard sites. So for example, um, uh, uh, I have vineyards in um, Oakville, mm -hmm. um, so the Oakville goes into the white label, okay. and um, like in, in Coombsville as what? well. The best Coombsville, the best uh, the Oakville goes in, and um, so vineyard from Oakville goes into the uh, automatically because this is uh, the most expensive. Uh, no, it's not because it's the most expensive; it's because it's better. It's better. What's the vineyard? Um, Oakville Ranch. It's above okay, Olive yeah, Olive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, farmed by Phil Caturi. Yeah. Yes, sure. Yeah, like a, a classic name. I mean, uh, Phil Couture is uh, uh, one of those like a hippie guy that you know. Uh, but it's been like a really. Uh, but he's a, he's a really. Car I would love to have this guy uh, on Twitter uh, one day and talk oh. to him because he's so different than anybody else. As far he's as amazing. Forever. Yeah, he almost looks like your wig. I know. A little bit different. I know. I just want to make you feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 175 cases of of uh, the uh, that cap. So it's. Oakville, you said, Coombsville. In Coombsville. In Coombsville. Yes, and Two vineyards. Um, uh, it actually comes from four vineyards, but um, but barrel selections of the four. Yeah. Do you wish, uh, um, earlier you were saying, like, you know, um, that uh, um, uh, um, owning, owning the, the land is very important. Do you wish you have a land? Do you, are you think like you know, uh, you know, what's it like a market world is making crazy? Um, I, um, I wish I could, but I could not afford it. Yeah, but you know, if you were like you know, if you had some money, because so you talk about vineyards, where you know, with this amount of money that I gave you a bit earlier, you said that you would you know, bank it, put it into the into the um, into uh, the land. Where will you buy uh, a vineyard? Um, Coombsville, Oakville, Stag's Leap, um, I think are. Some of the best areas here in Napa. Yeah. How how do you um, to come back a little bit to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to Christopher here um, and going back to to, uh, to to vineyards? How do you find vineyards? Hmm. You drive, you get up in the morning and say, okay, I have nothing to do in the winter in and, and just like a, take a, a drive and... Uh, and uh, you find them? No, I find yeah. them first through the people that manage them. So uh, they call you? Um, no, I usually know them and I, I, I ask them which they think is the best vineyards and I taste their wines that are made from those vineyards and um, try them out in small amounts and if they work out, I buy bigger amounts. But you see, uh, but you, you go and visit the vineyards? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And if you like what you see, and then you test the wines and the things like that? Oh, yes. Do you, um, I know you're also making wine a bit in Sonoma. Um, do you venture, you know, beyond the, you know, besides, you know, uh, you know, uh, like maybe Lake County and you know, things like that? Are you any interest on that, uh, those, those, uh, those appellations? So part of the Mark Hill wines. I make um, Flux, which is a Chateauneuf, California blend. I do a wine called Acha, which is a um, Tempranillo-based red wine. 
Um, and these come from mostly Lake County um, and Lodi. Mm -hmm. And also get fruit from Mendocino as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for those brands. Um, is there any, like, you know, a region that you think that uh, maybe, like, you know, would turn to be, like, great in uh, 10 years from now, 15 years from now? Well, or is it leading uh, uh, appellation to you, uh, for you? Well, uh, for Cabernet, I think uh, Napa is Besides the Napa. best. Uh, but for Tempranillo, um, I smuggled in some budwood from uh, a Pingus vineyard. No way. And planted it in uh, Lake County. And that goes into the Acho. Why you feel like, you know, so, okay, but, you know, why would you smuggle some, like, your cuttings from a pangus and give it to someone else because to the, grow it, and uh, and then a year from two years from now, you may lose the, 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 the food source, and you're screwed. It's all about relations. Is that right? Okay. I mean, I, I, I don't know, I don't understand, you know, I mean, because you're taking a lot of chances to smuggle that. Uh, no. Are you like, you know, okay, never mind. Um, I, I, I mean, <laughs> not if you declared as uh, unassembled wicker furniture. On the shit. That's how you come around? That's how, that's how you did it? No. Well, it looks like unassembled wicker furniture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a clip. That's a clip right there. You just have to, you just have to use your imagination, yeah. man. <laughs> Shit. I mean, maybe, 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 I bet you like a John Carlo would love to talk to you about, you know, things so. you, well, you know, because he brought like furniture like to, uh, to furnish like a Ikea like, forever. Well, it's, it doesn't, you know, you should talk to me. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, but, you know, now you, you did it like, you know, like you weren't born when you did it. Like, so, um, but, you know, it's pretty interesting. So, all right. So, um, it, out of those regions, besides Napa Valley, do you see like a, a region that, you know, wherever this is, like a Lake County, um, could be like, you know, Pop Valley that is considered now kind of, you know, more or less for a uh, Napa appellation, a part of Napa, but, you know, it's not quite Napa for a lot of people here. Um, but, you know, do you, do you see like a, a region, you know, besides uh, outside Napa Valley that might be, you know, one of the, 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 the dolphin? Of um, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, the prince of Cabernet Sauvignon. If Napa is the king of Cabernet Sauvignon, well, be his dolphin. You know, it's interesting because um, I, I work with Cayman Cayman wine. Yeah. And um, um, the Cayman wine comes from the the Sonoma side of Mount Beter. Yeah. And oddly enough, it ripens like Napa, as opposed to the Napa side of Mount Beter. So yeah. if you were to look at uh, Mayacamas. But you have exposure, though. I mean, right? Yeah. But let's look at the let's yeah. look at the way it ripens. You look at one side of the mountain versus the other side of the mountain, and one is Napa, one Sonoma. Yeah. The Sonoma side actually ripens like Napa, and the Napa side ripens like Sonoma. I'm confused. Well, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Draw me a uh, you know. <laughs> No, you look at um, my Camas is actually yes. on the the shadier side of the mountain because yes. it's the eastern exposed. Yes. But um, Cayman is on the yeah, that's like you know, you know. Yeah. So this is facing west. West, right? So it actually ripens like that's like right. Napa. That's right. So it's actually it's wrapping up like a, uh, it's wrapping up like you know uh, the Vaca uh, 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 right. range. And and uh, so Blue Mountain is yeah. a new a new appellation in Sonoma. That makes amazing Cabernet, and so you'll you'll see these Cabernets, um, Louis Martini, yeah, yeah, special selection, yeah, Monterosso, uh, Monterosso, Monterosso, yeah, yeah, that's all that, Monterosso yeah. But this is all this is, but this is all the uh, the, the western side yes. of Montevideo, yeah. and which I will definitely expect to to to, to open the same way as you know uh, um, anything coming up from the uh, uh, Coombs. Or coming up from uh, uh, the, the 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 east side of Napa, right. uh, High Mountain, and uh, and uh, and the uh, Pritchard Hill a little bit, um, you know, Oakville, the hillside of Oakville, mm -hmm. west, uh, the, right. the east side will, you know, that's mm -hmm. that would be the same thing, right? The same geology at least, but it's it's yeah. oddly Sonoma, yeah, it's, it's yeah, oddly Sonoma, but. but it's, Pretty good Cabernet. Yeah. Oh no no yeah, yeah. I, I I totally agree. It's really like not not a lot of people are really paying attention to that. 
What is the, the, the hardest appellation in Napa Valley for you to work with, if there was one? Um, hmm. I think it might be the warmer areas of Napa, the is ones that, right? that uh, ripen quickly. Um, the north, uh, like uh, yeah. Calistoga. Yeah, I put it back. No, guys, okay. So, okay. Because, uh, it's, it's hot. But it's not as hot as uh, you know, Santa Elena. I understand that Santa Elena has more like you know, hot days than Calistoga. And those are sometimes difficult to work with if, if your orientation of your rows aren't quite right. Yeah. It's more, a little more challenging. There's so, some amazing vineyards, don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. I, there's some yeah. amazing vineyards in, in those areas that yeah. I love. But it's uh, sometimes it's a little more challenging to deal with those vineyards and and south of those vineyards. What uh, um, those ones are delicious. I mean, they're like a little bit more like a restraint. I think that what I remember from Mary's, um, you know, like you, Mary's you, a little bit more. You, maybe you're saying balanced. A little bit more, uh, yeah, yeah, a bit more restraint. I mean, like you know, that's not the same fruit power. The same, you know, this is you know, there is maybe a little bit more. Acid. That's nice wines. That's very nice wines. Are, are you missing, I, I, I long, how long ago you opened those wines? Um, opened them about two hours ago. Two hours ago? Yeah. They're very, very nice. I'm afraid to ask the price. Uh, 95 and 195. <coughs> but that's good though. I mean, like, you know, 175 cases and the, and the 200 cases. I mean, that's, you know, 200 people in the world can have a so case. So do you think that. I should raise the price? No, I mean, they are very nice wines. I mean, they're really the 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 prices. Uh, the wines are uh, delicious. I mean, you know, uh, and I would, you know, the, 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 the wines sure. are the wines are a little bit different. I think I like those one better than Mary's. Um, this they tend to be they seem to be a little bit less tiring to me. Um, there is like a little bit more of an elegance into that. Even the oak is not as uh, as uh, um, obtrusive as uh, uh, on the Mary's. And it's, it's, it's 100% new oak. Yeah. That's pretty good. What are, what are the things that really pisses you off in the wine business nowadays? <laughs> well, like one, you, know, um, you don't have to go to the laundry list, but you know. Um, I, I'm trying to find one. Let's see. Oh, come on. Uh, see, it's not the weather. You can't do anything about the weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me think about this. Um, do you? Um, I don't know. Um, uh, is it is it difficult to make wine in Napa Valley? No. You know the taxes and all that. You know people are. Pretty, no, no. Yeah. Um, is it difficult to uh, deal with uh, uh, direct shipping? As that. No, all, all challenges are easy. You just find a way to do it, just like smuggling budwood. So, so you're a happy guy. No, it's a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, so, there's a way. There's a way. Yeah. So, so what are the what 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 are some of the challenges that you are working uh, on uh, nowadays? Hmm. Um, let's see, I'm making um, I'm making wine for a priest. You're making wine for a priest, yes. really? Yeah. What um, priest? Ch what Charles wine for a Russian Orthodox? Ah, really? Yeah. No way. It's not really challenging. It's, well, it's, that's it's, not okay, no. it's but diff it's different. Yeah. It's on the, so it's is it like sweet sweet wine? Okay. So you make a dessert wine? It's a it's a Charles wine that you know you would serve at yeah. you know at service. Yeah. You know at uh, but yes, for it to be oh, sweet. Yes. Oh, this is a religion asking that. Well, the father is asking me for this. Uh, sweet wine. I so late harvest. Can't say no. No, no, sure. And no. I don't know why he hired me because you know the day he hired me, um, you know, it's during harvest, and um, I'm I meet him at the vineyard and he's blessing the grapes with the holy water and everything, you know, and. Um, and he comes back to the winery, and and you know I, I get ahead of him like by half an hour, and I'm trying to do work orders on the computer and trying to get the printer to work, right? Yeah. And sometimes you know when you can't get the damn printer to work, okay, that's one of my frustrations. <laughs> okay, that's that's one of them. Okay. Technology. Yes, technology. Okay. okay. Right. So what I did was I I got so fucking mad. I, I took that printer out of the wall and yanked it out, and I go outside the office and and I lift it over my head and and as I'm Oh, crashing it down yeah. on onto the sidewalk. The priest is 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 driving by, 
watching this. It's so embarrassing, you know, and he saw you have issues. And he still hired me. Well, he didn't hire me, I do it for free. Yeah. But he still wanted So me. what you do for free? Huh? What you do it for no, free? I make, his, I make his wine. Yeah. Yeah. So he bless you and fix that? Are you, uh, you know, I, I, converted to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, No, I, you know, <laughs> I need a lot of blessings. <laughs> 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 no, he doesn't bless me. <laughs> so, when, what, so, so, what was, what would be the name of the wine? Um, it's a Catholic uh, Orthodox uh, winery. So, in order for us to taste it, we have to go to communion to the church. Oh, you come to my tasting room. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, seven ten first street. Okay, so okay, good. I thought that was like a you know, wine that it was you shipping and making the wine like for prohibition, right? Shipping all the wine in barrels and send it to the uh, to uh, to the monastery or to the church, and the, and the, no, and does, the priest he, will be like you know. He does that. He does that. Yeah. yeah. So how many cases of that you made? Um, it's about two, three hundred cases. Oh no sh. Yeah. How many Sundays in the week in the year? Oh, for, uh, for him to, there, to serve it. There's about fifty-two Sundays in a yeah. year, but I don't know how many he sells. I have a question on that, actually, uh, a little bit like uh, similar to that, you know, about a uh, uh, challenge uh, challenges for you. And uh, this is coming up from uh, um, this fellow here. Uh oh, that's a. Uh, um, you go. There you go. Uh, hey, Mark uh, Matt Simpson from Traverse City, Michigan. I'm curious to know: as, uh, is it easier to blend the wines that you build? Uh, fresh and sober in the morning, or is it uh, easier or more successful to go through those blending challenges uh, later in the day, evening, or uh, and or what is your favorite state with which to build the marquee wines that you? Okay. Okay. How about my favorite state is California. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely in the morning. <laughs> Definitely in the morning. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, your palate is a lot more fresh in the morning. Uh huh. Um, but um, <laughs> I like the question. <laughs> Very layered. <laughs> so in the morning, yeah, and uh, and. Uh, but in, in the morning, um, my state is just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so at, what, at what time did, you know? At what time do you wake up in the morning? Um, in order to achieve all those seven, eight. But I love blending. I yeah. think um, um, blending is, uh, is is all is all about making the wine. Uh, what what to? It's one of the decisions that yeah. goes into making the wine is blending. Uh, and if you get that wrong, you're, you're you get it all wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, so it, it's good. now. Now you're talking about blending. You know, um, so you blend about like you know um, a few tabs here. That's pretty easy, though. Would it be like you know uh, about blending? You know, the the, the bottle variety of like Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, blah 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 blah, and uh, that's blending. Blending, you no know, Cabernet Sauvignon with Cabernet Sauvignon. That's not quite blending. Yeah, it's that's, that's is it? relatively easy. But blending um, um, a Chateau Neuf du Pape well, it's um, yeah. blend uh, yeah. that I make for Flux is, yeah. it's, it's, it's still, when you have a lot of experience, yeah. you, you learn, you, you, you first blend all the best Grenaches and figure out what, what Grenache you like and put those together. And, you know, the best Carignan, the best Syrahs, you know, and then, and then you start playing around. And it's... Um, uh, you're building uh, elimination. Yeah. yeah, it's scientific and logical. Yeah, logical yeah. for a person that does it. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you do your blending, um, are you taking your uh, 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 your decision yourself, or usually are you involving people that you respect around and uh, and uh, uh, see what they think and uh, um, and um, and. Uh, um, are you doing the blending? Yes, you're gonna take the, the, the final decision, but you know, are you uh, re, are you um, um, do you feel any pressure with people around that you ask for this pressure to to get their the, uh, the thoughts? I include I include people in my tastings, but usually I go with my own decisions. Yeah. 
because people want to know my my process. Yeah. What is the uh, the, the most difficult vintage you have to uh, ever produce? Um, I think that would be eleven, two thousand eleven. Why? Well, nature didn't cooperate. Mm -hmm. Then we have a question. We have a question from the online audience. Yes. And they would like to know. Um, this is Jennifer, and she. Hi, Hi Jennifer. <laughs> And Jennifer would like to know, what do you do for fun in the Napa Valley, and what's your favorite restaurant? Oh, um, let's see. Well, I like to hang out at different places. Um, um, I love to drink beer at the end of the day and, and relax and, and meet with my friends. So I love to go to Norman Rose Tavern, Carpe Diem. My favorite restaurants, um, there are a few of them, Torque. Uh, Zuzu's, Eno Tree. Um, I think those would be my top three. Yeah. I agree with that. We think that by yeah, the delicious. Yes. Yeah, that's very, very cool. And uh, um, so, what the 2011 was your more challenging vintage on the on the uh, because of the growing conditions. Yes, there, there are certain vintages that um, that are not that challenging. Um, they, they they follow a certain ripening schedule yeah. that you know um, that the sun comes out yeah. and it shines and everything is nice. 2011 was not one of those vintages, yeah. Yeah. and you had to be on your toes and uh, adapt. Good for you. I mean, be create, but be creative. Sure. I mean, and I'm glad you have some of those vintage from time to time because I think like sometimes mm -hmm. like you guys, American winemakers, have this a little bit easy. You know, with these growing conditions in in Napa Valley, like in California. I mean, this is. And this year, like in that year, finally, you know, you have the right to think and make it things work. So, mm -hmm. you you know, that's good. I mean, I'm sure you did it fantastic. Well, thank you. Um, I should have brought some 11s as well. I, I, I will go to the winery. So, I want to go to the winery. I should, uh, you know, what is the address? 710 First Street. 710 First Street. The testing room? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, the, the testing room. and uh, You guys have a great time. And then, uh, um, website is what? Um, the website is uh, markheraldwines.com. Okay. And uh, everything is listed to that, co uh, contact information and, uh, yep. and uh, the wines, what is available and what, yep. is, what is not. Absolutely. Um, most of the wines are available to retail or this is available, uh, some of the wines are available only through the mailing list? Um, some are both. Uh, the Cabernet, some of them are only available retail. Uh, through the mailing list, okay, and we have wine clubs also. Okay, we call it the Happy Ending Wine Club. Ooh, what happened? Well, everybody likes a happy ending. Okay, so you get three choices with with our club. Oh, is that right? Well, what kind of happy ending you like? Yeah. So, like, you know, what are the choices? Well, you you, you got. Uh, <laughs> I have to sign up. I will go to the website and find, and, and figure this out there's, there's and no, check it out. Yes. All right. <laughs> there were some pictures on it. Um, no, not yet. No. Okay, I will. I will check it out. I will. I will go to the website and there's, check there's it out. No yet. Yeah, there's, there's no video yet. Yeah, there's no video yet. No. Hey, Mark, that was awesome. Man. <laughs> it's been like really a pleasure. I mean, I really, uh, you know, um, it's funny. I mean, even if I live in Napa, he lives in Napa. You know, it's a, a, a rarely we see each other. I mean, like maybe once a year, twice a year, three times a year. Uh, and it's always, you know, great to catch up. Um, this Absolutely. is the this is a conversation that I would have had with him uh, uh, at the bar if I had seen him at the bar with it on camera. Um, it's a, it's a, you know it's what is happening here, um, and uh, that was fantastic. I mean, again, a great time to catch up with you, and and uh, thank you to be so you know honest and uh, and uh, and uh, and forthcoming. Uh, thank you again to uh, 55 degrees uh, to uh, help us to uh, you know be there. And uh, uh, 55 degrees, that is the premier storage, one storage facility in Napa Valley. So if you have some wine, you have some issues to ship the wine, some like stupid states, <laughs> you know, leave the, the, the wines over at uh, uh, 55 degrees and, uh, and until you can figure out how to get there. Um, there is always a solution, you know. He will be smuggling uh, cuttings from, uh, from uh, Pingus. So uh, that's you know that's that's done. Um, anyway, uh, again, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, this is pretty much it for the week. Uh, next week we have some amazing uh, uh, testing coming up. We have uh, uh, 
La Jamaride with uh, oh, uh, coming up. She's so, uh, she's uh, incredible. We have the Nutcase uh, uh, Brian Page uh, coming up, and uh, with some Aussie friends, I think, looking from uh, from Australia and uh, some you know musicians. It's going to be outstanding. So you can log in, you can come up to the studio and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and hang out with the boys. Uh, that's about it. Um, I'm going to keep going conversation with uh, Mark in a different manner. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Until next time, so long. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, man. That was awesome. That was good. Yeah, pretty easy, right? You, you make a good redhead. <laughs>